Hi, I'm Kishwa. Join me on this four-part series as I uncover how different communities celebrate Diwali in Australia. I'll also be taking you into my home kitchen to share some of my favourite festival dishes. So light up a dia and let's get started. In this episode, I'm deep diving into the festivals of East India and how the Australian Bengali community celebrates. I'm at my local Indian grocery store, picking up some Diwali essentials before heading for a cup of cha with Seema and Reena, two of the Bengali Association's earliest members. We came to, my family came to Australia in 1984, and there was like 150 Bengalis in Victoria. And my father, who's now 92, was yes. one of the founding members of the Bengali Association. And that was the first year they, they had Durga Puja. So in Bengal, it starts with Durga Puja. So that's the biggest one and it goes for, you know, 10 days and it's a really big celebration. On Diwali, we have Kali Pujo as well. Yes, mm -hmm. Kali so Pujo, yeah. That's the 20 days, so Durga Pujo and then 20 days late. And those 20 days, like you said, were the Bijoya, where you visit your relatives and you eat. Yeah. They come and we eat. You know, my childhood memories are all of all the terraces and the verandas having the diyas lit and uh, the fireworks is, was a big thing, but you know, because it was so dangerous on the streets because everybody was lighting the fireworks you had to get to your destination if you were going to somebody's house to yeah. um, play with the fireworks before that but yet you had to stay home till dusk to light your lamp <laughs> so it's and like the, yeah, very the timing is crucial, crucial so you don't crucial. get burnt yeah a big part of diwali is you send sweets and savories to your neighbors yeah so you make platters and you send them around and we had the kids do that even up to now so I make platters and my kids take it around to, it doesn't matter who they are, they're not Indian. Yeah. So my Australian neighbour, she gives me lamingtons in return. She says, isn't this the festival where you're supposed to bring sweets? Oh, I love that so much. So she brings yeah. me lamingtons. Let's talk about the food. So in Durga Puja, of course, we have a lot of vegetarian food. We have narus, which are like these coconut little Ladoo, sweet bowls. Sort of. We have things like that. So yeah. there are a lot of traditional things and every single day there's like all these um, food that is offered to the gods and then that's the blessed food and then we consume that. And sweet by the yeah. dozen. Dozen. Yeah. Every well, single the bowl is, I guess, yes. synonymous with mishti. I remember going to so many Durga Pujas growing up and we were having um, aludom and luchi and it was served to yeah. hundreds and hundreds yeah. of people and it makes you realise how much the community came together and how many hands on board there used to be with for us to all come we together. Had, um, we had a kitchen team duties. Yes. and there was a lot of seniority based yeah. on experience. Yeah. Can I just ask where what? you both ranked? In I, the very, kitchen very low to start I did, with. I did get yeah. up to yeah. the job. Yeah, I went from the chopping of the coriander all the way to the frying of the puri. I love that. I love your personal <laughs> growth yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. They're the Definitely. stories we want to hear yeah. about. Yeah. If you leave the religious part outside, Diwali is that it's light it's bringing light into people's uh, lives yeah. it's bringing people together because what brings you together more than food you know a little bit of song dance games I agree. and families getting together i love the story of sending food platters to family friends and neighbors it's inspired my next recipe Hi, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to share with you one of my hosting tips and create for you my Diwali grazing board. This is such a hit when I'm hosting family and friends and I think you're going to love it. Start with some colourful bowls and light up some diyas. I'm showing you two of my no-fail condiments that are perfect for a cheese and chaat platter. The first is my fresh green chutney. It's a combination of mint, coriander, with tamarind, sugar, apple cider vinegar, chaat masala and chilli. The secret to my sauce and retaining that vibrant green colour is to add sev, a fried chickpea flour and ice. Blend it up and save this recipe. It's good on absolutely everything. My second condiment is a fruit chutney. I replace my quincy paste on a cheese board with this jam and my guests absolutely love the homemade touch. I've added some prunes, dates, tamarind paste, chaat masala and ginger jam into my blender. Add some apple cider vinegar, chilli and prune or apple juice to get it blended. Now add some juice and stew over a medium heat. While that's going on, heat some oil to fry off some coriander seeds and dried chilli if you like the heat.
add to your stewed fruit mixture and let it come together. Now get creative with your spread. I love raiding my Indian grocery store for nostalgic munchies like cake rusts and nankatayas. I add hard and soft cheeses, laddus, dried fruit and nuts. You can even mix it up with Aussie classics like Tim Tams and Lamingtons to create the perfect colourful grazing board to enjoy with family and friends this Diwali.